Hi, so we are back again discussing about another important topic uh, on infertility. So today we'd like to discuss about tubal factor infertility. So tubal factor infertility means an infertility caused by tubal disorders. So some problems or some disorders of the fallopian tube uh, making you unable to get a proper healthy pregnancy. So statistically, tubal factor infertility accounts for almost 20 to 25% of all female infertility and it is considered to be the most common case for uh, infertility but do not worry there are treatments available for this type of conditions as long as you are diagnosed properly so a few of these uh, tubal disorders I'd like to bring up a few examples the most common one is tubal blockage which means something is blocking the fallopian tube and then preventing its normal functions so before uh, I'd like to also briefly talk about uh, the fallopian tubes function because it's very important to understand uh, what functions uh, it, it uh, helps contribute in the reproductive system so that we can understand the severity of these dis disorders and why it can lead to infertility. So the fallopian tube are two uh, slender tubes that connect the ovaries to the uterus and they serve to collect the oocytes or egg cells released from the ovaries and to deliver it into the uterus so that it can implant safely and a healthy pregnancy can develop. But another lesser known function is that fertilization actually occurs in the fallopian tube, specifically the ampulla. So actually the sperm cell actually travels all the way from the cervix into the uterus into the fallopian tube. So they actually meet in the fallopian tube. This is where fertilization occurs. And once it's fertilized, it will travel slowly into the uterus to implant. So if there's any disorders, it will prevent this process from happening, causing infertility. So I mentioned tubal blockage. Secondly is uh, hydrocell pinks, which means uh, this fallopian tube is blocked because of accumulation of fluids. So some watery fluids because it's unable to uh, release itself due to the fallopian tubes. It might be even closed completely, causing the fluids to unable to flow out and then causes swelling, affecting, affecting its function, causing infertility. So the next one is uh, tubal adhesions, which means uh, which means the fallopian tube it starts to stick with neighboring organs for example it starts sticking with the uterus it starts sticking on the pelvic wall it may even stick on the ovaries and all of these will affect its function and then uh, the next one is a fatty tubal which means uh, the fallopian tubes has excessive fatty tissue and it might increase the weight and also affect its uh, function unable to properly do its job and then the last one we would like to talk about is a congenital deformation of the fallopian tube, also known as tubal dysplasia. So you are naturally born with this, so you, there's not much that uh, you can do, but there are some treatments available. So maybe your fallopian tube is just uh, sh naturally shorter, naturally thinner, maybe it's even completely missing. So there are treatments available for this, and in standard procedure, we will use both lap 3D laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. So for blockage, we will use a guide wire to release the whatever that is blocking the fallopian tube. If there's adhesions, we will also use surgery to remove it, cutting it one by one, and then place a bioadhesion barrier so they don't come back again. For fatty tissue, we will also need to remove them one by one to restore full function. So if you'd like to find out more information about this topic, please stay tuned. We'll be covering them one by one for the following few days.